In strategy, we're often never given guidance on how to manage other strategists. The following is gonna to touch on the key areas of focus you will need to become a great manager. This comes from my short guide to managing strategists, which you can download in the comments. For junior planners, the biggest challenge is finding your voice box. Coming head to head with people who have been in the workforce longer than you've ever been alive is a daunting prospect. You will struggle to grow as a planner if you do not have a strong voice that can convince, critique, and control a conversation. Everyone has different challenges. For creatives, it's dealing with creative rejection. For accounts, it's managing multiple personal agendas. For planners, their challenge is the expectation that they have a considered point of view which is consistently respected in a room full of subjective thoughts. Confidence is like fertilizer to a growing voice. It is the manager's role to create an environment where the junior planner can find confidence in their voice. I will cover the following five areas of focus for a manager. Understanding your relationship type, the importance of being lazy, meeting and presentations, reviews, and weekly one-on-ones. At a broad level, there are two types of relationships you will have with junior planners, direct and indirect. Direct are like family. They will work under you on the same client and interact with them every day. The other style is indirect. They're your neighbors. You probably sit in the same neighborhood, but you work on different clients. You see what they're doing from a distance and act in more of a mentorship role. These require nuanced approaches, but rely on many of the same fundamental building blocks. I'll explain the direct relationship first and then talk about the nuances for indirect. The best way for junior planners to find their voice is to use it all the time. That will require you to become a lazy boss. Rather than telling them what to do, they will be required from an early on to use their voice to tell you how it's gonna go down. Then you adapt from there. When I started managing, I would leave account meetings where they would ask for work. I'd sit with the junior planners and tell them how we were going to divide and conquer the request and then split the workload evenly. This was considerate and saved everyone's time, but it meant that the planner was not on a fast track to learning. A couple of years ago, I changed to the lazy approach. I'd walk out of the meeting with a request for work and I'd sit with the junior planner and ask them, how do you think we should go about tackling this assignment? I got them to work through how they would approach the request. This is an important first step in finding your voice. Looking at the creative director, creative team approach is a great example of how this should work. They let their junior teams attack the problem first, then they bring back their solutions, which are then edited by the creative director. This helped me develop my approach to work too. For instance, on a project, we agreed that we would spend two days looking for an insight into the brief. I told the juniors to have a crack and bring back a bunch of insights that could inform the brief after 24 hours. Then we would review them together. This allowed them the first go at describing their insights and why they thought they were so vital. This should apply to everything. Give them the first go at creating the presentation or the framework. All this is time permitting, but you should be trying to do this as much as possible. Don't tell them how you want it. Let them have the first crack. Be the lazy boss. The artist Snoop Dogg has the most features on any song of all rappers. He has 583 songs under his belt. You've got to be like Snoop. You no longer want to be the main planning act in meetings. Your new role is to lend your voice and set up your junior planners in presentations. You want to say as little as possible. Get your junior planners voice box going and owning as much of the planning presentation as possible in meetings. You should get them to speak and only chip in if they're getting hammered or questions on material is too complex. At first, your account, creative, and client team will naturally just want you presenting. We prefer when you do it. You just know the client so much better. Although this is a nice little ego boost, it is important to try not to do this. It's not only important from a growth perspective for the junior planner to be a doer and not a watcher, 
but from a financial and job safety point of view, it's key too. If you have a junior planner on scope and the client or account team cannot see the value that they're not adding, they are likely to be cut when scopes will naturally get reduced the following year. I always try to get my junior planners to email the client at least once a week. The best way I've done this is to get them to send trend reports so their name just stays top of mind. The other benefit is that they start to gain more weight for planning on the account. When you have two strong planning voices in the room, you can help persuade and move people. Most managers hate giving reviews as it's usually tied to money which you probably don't have too much control over. However, if you can get them happening regularly and set the expectation that they are not tied to money, then you are in a good position. At the start of a planner's career, they will want more contact than less. Some of the best managers do three, six and 12 month reviews. This is usually a single piece of paper with what they're doing well, what they're going to work on and where they could improve. For the 12 month review, your agency may have a template of how they want strategy talent reviewed. However, if they don't, the one that I use is the three P's, performance, peer review and participation. What work has gone live that you worked on and where are your fingerprints on that work? What did they do? What does the rest of the team think of them? If they are a direct report, you should have a good idea of how account and creative feel about them, which will require you to go and have a quick interview with the different stakeholders. What are they doing to make the strategy department better? This was specific to what I looked for. I would be looking to see if they create internal documents that the whole department could use or if they had helped elevate the department through white papers. I look for someone who is excelling in all these areas. If you would like a copy of my strategy review template, there's a link to download it in the comments. Consistent contact is key to a healthy relationship. The best way to do this is a half hour reoccurring meeting. This is a chance to be a weekly sounding board and just listen to them. It's their time and not a time for your extra request. One-on-ones also help track patterns in the employee's health. Through these, you should be able to detect early signs of dissatisfaction. This will allow you to course adjust before they start looking for other jobs. It's more expensive to hire new talent than it is to get people to stay. For direct reports, one-on-ones may feel like you're always talking to this person, but this is a good time for them to bring up bigger things like career mapping or promotions. So keep this time. For indirect reports, you'll probably not have much formal contact with them. So it's key you keep a time that is for them every week. They may use the time to just recap what they're doing, show you work or complain about other staff or ask about how to approach a situation. Even if it feels useless to you, it is important to them. Having a consistent time is key. A small tip, plan them at the start of the week. So if you do have to miss it, you can reschedule for later that week. Just don't miss them. If you found this helpful, you can get the full short guide to managing strategist with a link in my description.